All right. Um, I hope that you understood the graphical method and uh, how important it is to visualize what happens when we change the objective coefficient, when we change the right-hand side value, and how we can find a feasible solution, etc. Unfortunately, graphical methods are uh, limited to the cases when we have only two decision variables, which is, of course, not the case at all in real life problems where we have hundreds and thousands of decision variables and constraints. Luckily, we have many softwares available in the market for us to solve such a large LP models. And the good news for you guys is that Excel has an embedded, we call it an add-in, all right, which is a, uh, it's a software that's available uh, for all users of MS Office, where you can use, it's called Solver, where you use it in order to solve your LP model. So what we're going to do next is we're going to solve the computer problem using Excel. So I'm going to make a demonstration for you where I will build the model on Excel, and then I'm going to show you how to use the Excel spreadsheets uh, into as an entry data into the solver which is the software and I'm going also to show you how to download the solver um, it will take only a few seconds uh, to, to, to do that on your computers okay so here I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you how to build uh, the air conditioning problem uh, uh, problem on Excel and then how to build the model on Excel, um, meaning that I'm going to um, we're going to put the mathematical expressions of the objective function and of the constraints in some cells, and then we're going to use these cells later to as an entry um, as entry data for the solver that uh, solve the problem itself. So my advice for you this is what i do do in all my um, lp models i put all the data on the top on the upper part of my spreadsheet as you can see here these are all values that uh, we have already seen before it was given to us so for example assembly time we know that it takes four hours for type one ten hours for type two and this is the available time okay so everything on the top is given now, here I'm going to start building the model. And as we uh, discussed before, the model uh, has three components. The first component is the decision variable. Also, I use color uh, coding um, because it helps me a lot, uh, especially when I'm building large uh, LP models. So this in this cell, I'm going to uh, have the value of the number of computers type 1 to produce. You see here type 1, this is computer produce. So I will give it an initial value. I will give it a value of 1, any value you can give. However, the value of 1 helps you to verify whether you are uh, typing a, a, or if you are doing any typing mistake. I will show you that in a moment. And I will give an initial value of 1 here for type two, okay? Second component is my objective uh, function, which is what it was, the profit. And we have already learned from the formulation that profit is 60 X1 plus 50 X2. Now I'm not going uh, uh, to here type, this is equal to 60 times one. No, I'm going to refer to the cell where I have the value of my decision variable. Why this? Because then uh, solver, when it solves the problem, it knows that it needs to change these two values when I define these values as my decision variables. Everything will come uh, 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 in time, don't worry, but um, I need to tell you this uh, now, why I'm not typing directly 60 times 1. All right, so here we go. You know that in Excel, you always start uh, with a function equal so the equal sign so it's equal to this one again i could type here 60 right i could type uh, 60 times this however the reason why i don't want to do this but i need to i want to refer instead to the cell where i have the profit of 60 so that at the end when i finish doing my model 
and let's say I was wondering what would happen if this profit was 70 or this was 45 or this was 25 or this was 120 what will happen is I'm not going to touch my model anymore once I build the model from this point onward down I will not touch it anymore all that I do if I'm wondering what would happen if this or if that I will change only my parameters and that's it and I will see the results all right so back to my objective function this is equal to you see uh, you can see here on on this bar that it's b5 times this one plus in the next demo i'm going to show you some shortcuts but for now let's do that uh, in the standard way and of course you when you finish your function you uh, press on enter here we go now I, will, um, uh, I can show you why it was uh, beneficial for us to give the values one and one here because we know that this is equal to this times that plus this times that so I know that there uh, the, the result will be the sum of these two and here I can see that the sum is 110 you can read it here so and I can see that the result was 110 that means there was nothing wrong in my function so that's the objective function we are left now with the constraints so let's build these constraints we'll put the left hand side on one cell and the right hand side on another cell and this is the assembly time what is important by the way when you are building a spreadsheet is not what you read here this what you read here is very important so that you can keep track of what you're doing but what's really important is the uh, cells where you are typing the left hand side and the right hand side and the objective function and the decision variables all right so here this is assembly time this is equal to this so again i'm not typing four no i'm referring to the cell b2 where four value is typed times this one plus this times that and enter it's 14 all right again in the next demo i'm going to show you also here some uh, um, some shortcuts that will uh, that will save time for you if you have so many constraints but for us we have only three constraints so let's do that this is equal to this is the inspection so that's this times that plus this one times that and finally the storage space equal this times that plus this one times c11 here we go now for the right hand side i can also here type the value that i know but as i told you i don't want to touch the model anymore once i uh, finish building it and if i want to do any experiment i will just change my parameters so i will refer to the value of the cell where i have the parameter so equal here we go so you can see that this is 100 and this is equal to this one and this is equal to the cell now my model is ready here we go this is my total model it's ready in every cell I have here I have a value for decision variables there's no function here that's for sure there's no f and, and here these are values of course and here the left hand side you can see that they are always uh, functions of the cells where I have my decision variables now we want to go and solve it how to solve it I need to use a software the software is available for me because I have already downloaded it it's in data you go and see solver here now if you don't have it what you can do you go to file you go to all the all the way down to options and then you go to add-ins and then you go down here manage add-ins you press on go and hey, here you have a list of add-ins and you select solver all right here we go it's solver for me it's already ticked so i'm not going to do it 
Uh, so I'm going to cancel. In your case, you tick it or you check it and you press OK. And that's it. You will have it. OK, for me, I have it. So I go data and I go solver. Now you can see that there are already some parameters that are there, but I'm going to reset it because I'm, I need to show you everything from scratch. All right. This is the data entry into solver. So it's only a user interface. All right, we don't know what's happening in Solver itself, but this is what we need to enter for Solver so that it can find the solution for us. And it tells you, tell me where is your objective? Our objective is in cell uh, B13. So that's it. We simply go there. We tell Solver that the function is already typed in cell B13. All right, that's done. Then we have to tell solver what to do. Do you want to maximize, minimize, or we want to achieve a certain value? We don't want that. We want to maximize in our case. So that's it. Now, by changing variable cells, which cells? These are our decision variables. So we go here and we select these two. These are our decision variables. Then we want to add the constraints. So here we go, add. Now it tells you, where's your left-hand side? And then right hand side, left hand side, where's your cell reference? Here we go. This is the first one. Then it tells you what do you want. This is less or equal, greater or equal, equal, or you have other options. We're not going to deal with it now, but less or equal. So we keep it. This is a default sign. And here, this is the cell reference where I have the right hand side value. Now, because I need to add one more, so add, okay? Also, cell reference, this one, less or equal than this one. One more, add this one, should be less or equal than this one. And now we are done, so we press OK. Now you can see here that there's already an option that is ticked, which is the non-negative constraint. All right, so this is done. So now we have all the constraints, and what we have to do is to solve it. Right, so you can see here a button solve. So we'll solve, and now it tells us that solver found a solution. All right, and it asks us, Do you want to keep it or not? So, yes, of course, you want to keep it. So, let's keep that. So, we press OK, and now we can see our solution. So, you can see here that we have 740 profit maximum. This is our solution nine and four. This is the same solution that we found using the graphical method. And also here, we can see the left-hand side. Remember also when we talked about the slacks, we found that the assembly time, we are not using all what we have. And look at this. This is what we are using. This is what we have. So we have a slack, which is their difference, 100 minus 76. While these two, they are binding. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So I can also show you an extract of my Excel model and you can tell me then what's your what are the binding constraint if you see this is equal to that that means this constraint is binding otherwise it's not binding all right so i hope that this demo was clear for you i'm going to do another demo for you uh, for the other for another problem where i'm going to show you also some um, some shortcuts which will help you a lot